Please welcome Oliver Stone. Your theater's gotten larger since the last time. Yeah, isn't it lovely? Isn't it lovely? Aren't we lucky to be here? Nice. Now, uh, besides being a masterful filmmaker, you have a reputation, I think warranted, for enjoying telling people stories that involve secrets and conspiracies. This, this movie, Snowden, might be the first one that is factually verifiable. Because the government is not necessarily denying what Snowden said happened. Yeah. They're just saying he was wrong to tell us. Does that change the story for you that you can actually say, no, no, I'm clearly not making any of this up? <laughs> uh, Stephen, I don't know how old you are, but I've been doing a lot of research all my life, and all, all my movies I've stood behind and fought over the details on. I know, but you've in, been in, attacked for a lot. Yeah, like I've been attacked, JFK, but, yeah. you know, people viciously attacked you and saying that you're not a journalist, you're making this no, stuff up. This not is a confabulation, journalist. you know, it's yeah. composite characters. I'm not a journalist and I'm not a historian. I'm a dramatist. And I tell the story. And sometimes you, 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 you shape things in two hours. You have to cut a lot of things that happen. And in the Snowden case, there's about 120, 30 programs that the NSA has. We only show you two or three in the course of the movie. But what is verifiable, and what you're, you're correct, is that the, our government has developed and deployed the most massive global surveillance system ever seen in the history of mankind, and did so without democratic consent. And it's, uh, it's one person, one person, Mr. Snowden, has had the courage to reveal it with, out of sincerity, out of loyalty to government, and certainly his strong conviction that it was illegal and unconstitutional. What, what he did was illegal to yes. tell us about it. Yes, it was. Um, a lot of people say he should here. be able to come back. Oh, excuse me, what? There's a higher law here. You what is, what is the higher, higher law, law of conscience and the fact that... But the, if everybody just follows their conscience, yeah. we've got uh, perhaps uh, good ethical people, but then you end up having an anarchic system. Do you think he should come back and at least stand <laughs> trial for his crimes? I think he would, and I, I know he would, but I wish he could because we, they charged him with the Espionage Act. With the Espionage Act, you cannot present a public interest defense. You cannot raise what he did. You can't talk about national, quote, national security because they can always say this is a question of national security. There is no defense. They will send him to jail for as long as they choose. This is not, is not a fair trial. Do you think we're being watched all the time? Well, they have the potential to go back. It, we're on a, we're, we're in a, in a, in a, we're on a, a, a disc, series of discs all over. The, yeah, they the can't go back. The Attorney General of the United States yesterday said, "Put uh, a piece of tape over the camera yeah. on your computer." Yeah, that's okay. Helpful. That's the you know the, the assistant Encryption. head of the of yeah. the Justice Department. Absolutely. Do you think that we are being watched on a daily basis? You know, there are people just sort of peeking in on the cameras, watching. They're recording all of everything in the world, and they have a huge storage capacity now and they can go back and look in the database. What they're doing is data mining on a vast scale, mm -hmm. bigger than Google or any of that stuff. But mm -hmm. Google's part of it, too. I mean, they, you know, Google collaborated with the government until Snowden's revelations. Now they've gone into uh, encryption, and encryption has resulted much more so, more varied, and all these companies have been, in order to keep their customers, have provided encryption, not because they, it's, they want to, because they'd lose their customers who'd go to other security services if they didn't. As an artist, um, what is it about uh, secrets and conspiracies that interest you? Because, you know, the emotionality being the heart of creating a story and moving an audience um, with a sympathetic response to your hero, what is the emotion you're trying to elicit from us by peeling back uh, a curtain, real or fabricated, by Oliver Stone? What, what do you want to make us Well, philosophically, feel? I don't want to get into it, but I think that every no, day... philosophically, let's every get day, into it. Okay, every... <laughs> all right. Okay. Every day in our culture, we get the surface of things. It's sanitized. We live in a Disney world. And I, as a dramatist, uh, not as a journalist, but as a dramatist, am fascinated by getting beneath the surface and digging. 
So all these stories reveal far more. People in power, men in power, have regularly lied to the American public for many years over many things, including the origin of wars. And we what go. What is the original go, lie for you that inspires? Original you? lie. Uh, you can start with the Bible. No. Uh, <laughs> sure. Why? The National Security Agency itself began in 1952. It was a result of hiking the fear. I mean, uh, the, Truman br brought this in in NSA in 1947, N National Security Act. But it's grown. The acceleration of the national security state to today is enormous. But 2001 was another acceleration point mm -hmm. with the Patriot Act and the violation of all the ethics of what America used to be when I grew up. I thought it was, but uh, we changed after World War II. But after Bush, uh, it got out of hand. And when, when Obama came in in 2008, we thought there would be reform. Many of us did. Mm -hmm. And I think Edward Snowden was one of his motivations was he, he was hopeful and he waited for five years. He was working that whole time in intelligence roundtable community. And he saw by 2013 that there was no, no reform. On the contrary, Obama was doubling down on the Bush administration. Did you spend any time with Snowden for this? I did. I went nine times to Moscow. And mm -hmm. he helped us. He cooperated with us. He gave us a lot of detail in terms of Has he seen the final product? Yes, he has. Yes, he's very pleased with it. And he said it's as realistic on policy issues as it can be, given that it's a movie. And he understands the nature of a two-hour movie that is different than a documentary. But we have been really stuck to his facts as much as we can. And we haven't made up anything outrageous, but we have used dramatic devices to make things a thriller, to make it a thriller, which is what it is. You know, I wanted to make Born Identity, but I don't have any guns. I don't have any car chases. I have no. Uh, there is a beautiful, sexy female in it. It's Shailene Woodley. I think you'll like her. Is there sexy time in it? What's well, a very. <laughs> They're, uh, Just it, trying to sell some tickets, man. Are there some no, sexy no, it, time in this? It's sexy time, but it's surveyed time. Uh, oh, wait, so like the government's watching the sexy time? Yeah. <laughs> or they, you just it's sold in some the, tickets, my in, friend. Uh, you know, they, I'm sorry, they, they, the pornographic habits of our audience yeah. uh, was, was heavily, is always being watched. Sure. Because uh, you, uh, you don't know, I don't want to go into all the stories, but there's a lot of Muslims in, the, in the America, and they made a specialty of watching their pornographic habits because they were looking for ways to discredit them. Uh, two days ago, we had Joseph Gordon-Levin on the show. Yes. And he said that one of the uh, one of the things that you two did together is that you smoked some weed and you watched movies together. And legally, I have to ask you, are you high right now? Uh, I've enjoyed my life. And, uh... Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Snowden is out in theaters now. Oliver Stone, everybody.